This week I'm going to show you how you can use shaded areas in an urban environment to get great portraits. Adorama TV presents Exploring Photography with Mark Wallace, where you will learn innovative techniques on shooting a wide range of photography. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, joining me today is Carissa. You might recognize her from the video we did about using zones in the studio. Well, we're not in the studio. We're in an urban environment, and a lot of people have written me with the same question, which is, hey, I need to get some editorial shots. I don't have a flash. I don't have a reflector. Is there a way that I can do this and do it well? Well, absolutely. There's a secret that most uh, professional photographers know, and that is to find nice, soft, diffuse light. And that light hides in alleys like this one. First, we're gonna shoot in the alley. Then we're gonna zip around downtown Phoenix and look for areas that look like this, nice and shaded, to see exactly what we can get. And I'll guarantee you, if you follow these principles, you'll get some great portraits. So let's start shooting. Well, here we are again in really nice, soft, diffused light. Now, this isn't an alley, but the principle is the same, where we have this really large building here. It's casting a nice shadow, so we have soft, diffused light that's going to look great for our portrait. But the one issue we do have that's a little bit different than the alley we had before is behind us, we have a nice, bright sky. So if I frame that incorrectly, what's going to happen is we'll have a great shot of Carissa, but the background's going to be totally blown out. So paying attention to the background is extremely important. The other thing that's going to happen because of this background, if I just use my camera in aperture priority mode or shutter priority mode, the metering, the TTL through the lens metering, might get that wrong. So what I've done here is I've gotten really nice and uh, close to Carissa here, and then I set my camera to manual mode, and I made sure I had my settings dialed in in manual mode. So then if I move around and I get more or less of that background, it's not going to throw off my exposure, and everything's going to work just great. So what I want to do is shoot some photos, and I want to show you what this looks like using the building as the background as opposed to using the sky as the background and you'll see that they're two very different looks. Now the key to these portraits is the shallow depth of field. So if you're not familiar with shallow depth of field, make sure you watch my video all about depth of field. So what I've done here is I am using a nice long lens, and the reason I'm doing that is it really restricts the angle of view, so I'm only seeing Carissa, and the background is really eliminated, and everything is nice and tight. I have my aperture wide open at 2.8, so the background falls out. So I'm really focusing on Carissa and getting some nice portraits and letting the background fall away, and that's that's how these are working. So let's use those principles. Let's keep shooting in downtown Phoenix and see what else we get. Well, we found another great location here in downtown Phoenix. And the thing that really drew me to this location is this great graphic back here because it's full of color. And so that's really going to match your wardrobe and it's going to look wonderful. But there's an issue and that is there's a clear logo right here and I can't have that in my photos. And so what I'm doing is I'm using a Canon 85mm f1.2 L lens and that will give us extreme shallow depth of field. And so this color will stay in the picture but the logo and all the details are just going to be wiped away. It's going to have this amazing bokeh, extreme shallow depth of field and we're going to get a really, really nice portrait. And I call this my magic lens because it solves all kinds of issues for us. And so we're going to shoot and show you exactly what this looks like. All right, when I'm shooting here, one of the things I really have to make sure I do is not to shoot straight on like this 
because the depth of field is going to fall away right behind Carissa, and we're not going to have any depth. So if you have a situation like this, don't shoot straight on. Shoot from an angle this way. And so what that's going to do is we're going to get a great shot of Carissa, and then everything's going to fall out of focus on this uh, background here, and that's really what you want to do. So make sure you watch the angle that you're using. Shoot at an angle, not straight on. So we're going to shoot. Well, in this setup, I saw that we had this really nice yellow panel right here. We're in a nice shady area. And so what I want to do is I want to get a headshot that's really tight with really bright yellow background. And so what I'm doing is I'm using a long lens. I'm using a 200 millimeter lens and I'm zooming way in. And what happens is that really compresses things. It gets rid of all this extra stuff behind Carissa. And we just get a nice tight headshot that's got a really nice background. It's nice, it's clean, it's simple, and it works. And this is what those photos look like. Well, there you have it. When you're in an urban environment, the key is to look for places that have nice, soft, light alleys, open shade, large buildings that can really cast a shadow. And then don't forget about the background because if you get some really nice backgrounds, you can either add color like we did with this nice yellow background here. You can throw that color out of focus to get rid of logos and trademark things, things like that. Or you can just shoot in a normal alley. And you can see by the photos we took here today that there are a lot of different options and you don't necessarily need a reflector and a flash and studio lighting and some kind of assistant. You can do it all by yourself and your subject is really gonna look great. Well, thanks for joining me. Remember to tune in every single episode. Don't miss a single thing. Make sure you click that subscribe button and so you see all of the great Adorama TV videos. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time. Oh, I forgot I was supposed to start talking. It stinks right here, doesn't it? <laughs> like, wow. It really reeks. We're next to like a dumpster and it smells so bad right now. Um, oh, I think there might be a dead body buried yeah, back here. Oh, that is nasty. How you doing? There's a clear, uh, what is this called? <laughs> Logo. Dang it. Adorama TV is brought to you by Adorama, your best source for the equipment and knowledge you need. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 7 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, the next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Check out the Adorama Rental Company for professional cameras, lighting, computers, and more. We'll help you make the best selection to match your needs while giving you the knowledge to achieve the best outcome from your rental. Adorama is your complete solution for equipment, printing, training, and more. Adorama, more than a camera store.